Well, Alex, obviously we're only a few days away from the, the massive pay-per-view here in Perth, a country that's been starved for fights since before the pandemic. You're obviously the face of this sport in this part of the world. So what are the emotions now that hard part's over with, you just got to make weight and then go fight Islam Makhachev? Yeah, yeah, now the fun part. But uh, yeah, it's good. Good to be back here, not only in Perth, obviously Australia. Uh, as I've been saying all week, all uh, us Aussie fighters all from this region, Australia, New Zealand, we deserved a, an event over here. Uh, not just us, uh, obviously I deserve to, to fight in front of home crowd, defend a belt or fight for a belt, whatever it is. And then you've got the fans who deserve uh, an, an event here and having their, their uh, local fighters fighting here too. And obviously the rest of the card is stacked with these Australian fighters too. Are a lot of them kind of viewing you as like the guy that will take this sport into the next level here in Australia now that they can come back after the pandemic? Oh man, like uh, it's obviously good for them to, you know, I'm sure... They all believe in their skills. They've seen it, yeah. They've seen us uh, go go to the top. They've seen us get the belts. Um, but I mean, uh, you know, f f that's what obviously Robert uh, did that as well. So they got to got to see that, uh, which is always going to be motivating. And you know, oh, this can be done. You know, even from a small gym or wherever you are. Uh, but you know, now we're obviously going champ, champ, and, and going uh, real big and pound for pound and all that. So uh, you know, we I guess we are showing uh, these guys coming up or even the younger generation that. Uh, yeah, not only be a champion, not only um, do well in the UFC, you can be the best. You know what I mean? The pound for pound number one, champ, champ. You know, f you know all that type of stuff. So, uh, I think we are setting a good example. So, that's you, good. You mentioned the pound for pound thing. You're number one. He's number two. Do you view him as the true number two pound for pound fighter in the world, or is it just that just something the voters voted for, like gave him that? Do you view him as the second best fighter in the world? Oh man, like uh, again. These uh, this isn't up to us, you know what I mean? Like uh, people can ask me, you know, if you go and uh, take him out, you're going to be the the greatest uh, ever and all that stuff. So that's not up to us, you know what I mean? Uh, do I think I had a harder path to you know pound for pound and all that? Yeah, like you know, look at my resume. resume. But um, do I believe he is as good as a number one pound for pound? Yeah, or number two pound for pound? Yeah, for sure. I believe he de definitely deserves to be up here. He's a, he's a great fighter. So. Uh, you know, uh, that, I mean, yeah, again, you, you probably look at the resume, it's still a good resume, but it's probably not as uh, as uh, good and as deep as uh, some of ours. But at the same time, when it comes to skill, he's definitely right up there. Michael Chandler was breaking this fight down, and he said that uh, Islam is just brilliant at the basics. He does nothing wrong. He, does, he doesn't do anything flashy. Everything is just perfect. Did you agree with that statement when watching tape on him? Yeah, well, uh he doesn't take unnecessary risks. You know, that's, uh, that's the proper way of doing it. He does, uh, we all know what they're good at and what they want to do. Um, they're calculated in that sense. You know, a lot, a lot of people, uh, you know, obviously you're seeing some people saying that he can, it can strike, it's underrated, but then you're seeing a lot of people that, you know, say uh, it's not good. But, I mean, uh, it is calculated. You know, I mean, that's something that uh, he does very well. He doesn't uh, overcommit too much. He does sometimes. Uh, but he doesn't... Uh, he will fight on the back foot and wait for the right time to shoot and things like that. His distance game isn't too bad. Uh, so little things like that, he's, uh, he does well. Like I said, he's calculated. Um, you know, what exactly did Chandler say? He was saying... Brilliant at the basics. At the basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. But uh, I don't know about that. I think he's just uh, more calculated. That's probably an unnecessary risk. I think that's uh, what he's probably better at. Do you feel a sense that you need to represent Australian wrestling against him, considering everything he said about how Aussies don't have wrestling? Down yeah, there? yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like uh, coming to my, my country and say we don't have wrestling? Yeah, all right. Well, uh, I'm going to have to do something about that. So how, how do you see the fight? He's shooting doubles from the get-go. <laughs> so how do you see this fight playing out? He says he, the, once you feel his power, like he, he is very confident he can knock you out in that octagon. I just told you he's a very uh, calculated fighter. He uh, doesn't take unnecessary risks. Him coming uh, looking for a knockout, that's an unnecessary risk. He won't be doing that. The final one for me, what do you make of uh, the UFC announcing that Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler will be the coaches of the Ultimate Fighter this year? Yeah, yeah I think, think it's good. Obviously, it's always good uh, to have uh, Conor coming back to the sport. Brings a lot of eyes here, you know. It's, uh, and uh, that'll be a fun fight as well, you know what I mean? And it's, uh, I think it's uh, clever, clever for both of them. Clever for, for Connor because uh, he can go and fight, and that's, uh, you know, they're both uh, powerful dudes. Obviously, it's a winnable fight because they're just going to go for it, so it's going to be entertaining. But, I mean, that just puts uh, Connor right back in the conversations, you know, for, for the belt and all that type of stuff. And for people to say, you know, oh, he wouldn't deserve it and there's no way they're going to do that, you're pretty crazy, right? Like, uh, it's Connor McGregor, and if he takes out someone like a Chandler, 
you know his name's going to be mentioned. You know people are going to be talking about him. Uh, so it's it's interesting. It's good to look at because I plan on taking that lightweight belt and I'm looking at, at seeing what's happening in the, in the division. There's a lot of uh, potential matchups uh, after this one, but obviously first I've got to worry about what's in front of me. And you, you also said you wanted uh, you do plan on going back and to featherweight and fighting the winner of the Coleman event. How do you see that fight playing out? Um, I'm fifty fifty on it. I think they're uh, obviously both uh, great fighters and. It just depends who, who turns up on the night with the right game plan. I think, again, I'm 50-50 on it. I don't know. So I might know from one minute in the fight, you know, but, uh, I'm uh, yeah, obviously it's, I think it's going to be a fun fight, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, good. I'm just, I'm just glad uh, it's, it's happening. You know, it's going to give me a, a pretty clear guy who's next So when I go back down. So it's good because I want to be active, right? So uh, line these uh, next guys up for me because I want to ha- have a very busy year. Alex, just to go back to you know, the car thing, uh, it seems like that fight's going to be at 170, though, and I guess that's where people are maybe you know, debating. Could he even make 155 now mm-hmm. is one question, and if it's at 170, maybe that's where the argument of would he deserve it at 155 would come in. What would be your response to that, I guess? You know, it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, it, it is Conor McGregor, and you know, when you pull on those types of, of numbers, and you got to remember he is always taking on uh, the, the good guys as well, like the, the good fighters. So he's always uh, stepping up and taking on, on dangerous fighters. So, And it's at 170, you're right. It's not the f- uh, lightweight division. Look, if it was anyone else, I'd say there's no way, right? So, like, uh, I'm just, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty obvious uh, ha- how it goes down, you know what I mean? So I'm, you're not really saying anything that anyone should be surprised about. Yeah, I think we all understand. Yeah. And uh, the, the parody between your last fight with Max, who has absorbed the most strikes in UFC history, and Islam, who's absorbed the least in UFC history for the amount of fights he's had, um, like, what's the dramatic difference in preparation for two guys like that and knowing that one might be harder to find? Um, I always find them, though, right? That's, that's, that's my thing. So uh, it is definitely different. You've got to approach it right because you can't get – uh, too carried away because we know he wants to shoot as well. So that's what's good about him. He is patient. He will stay on the outside. Uh, you overcommit, he'll make you pay. You know, if you overcommit incorrectly, you know, it can be a, a long night for you. But uh, obviously, I'm a calculated fighter. That fight IQ is uh, definitely going to have to come into play. Um, I need to turn up. You know, this isn't a fight where I can just come in and, oh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I need to be on my game. Uh, but I'm always on my game. You know, I always prepare how I should. And uh, you're going to see me turn up. And uh, I plan on uh, raising two belts at the end of it. And you win this fight. It'll be a 13-0 UFC start for you. The only other fighters who have done that are Anderson Silva, Kamaru Usman, and Habib Nurmagomedov. What would it mean to you to kind of join that group of elites? Oh, man, it's, uh, you know, it's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, I've joined a couple of, uh, of cool things, right? Like, you know, being a champion is incredible. And being... Uh, uh, pound for pound, number one is obviously incredible. Then going champ and champ, uh, champ, champ, uh, and then the streaks and all that type of stuff. It's it's a pretty good resume. It's pretty good uh, numbers there, and uh, I guess that speaks for itself. Thank you. Hey, Alex, just curious, man. I wonder, like, how much do you think Habib's dominance uh, has sort of affected people's, like, respect and fear of Islam's wrestling? Like, because they see Islam as, like, the next incarnation of Habib, and because of Habib being so dominant, I wonder how much some of, like, Islam's past opponents have looked at that, and that's translated mentally. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious that they've got a, a strong ground game. You know, they, they do have a, a certain style, a uh, very good MMA-specific uh, style, and uh, people haven't been able to capitalize, not capitalize on or, or, or deal with or figure that out. Um, they're, you know... You've got, to tr- you've got to train uh, how you meant it. You've got to prepare uh, for these guys properly. Because, again, if you're just going to go there and just think uh, you can just do anything you do in a jiu-jitsu room, uh, you, need to, you need to change it up. You need to study these guys, study their movements, uh, details. I don't think uh, – I could be wrong, but uh, I don't think uh, other teams or other fighters uh, did enough of that. Uh, but we always do that. We always, uh, you know, game plan properly, prepare properly, uh, and always prepare for the worst. So uh, no matter what happens in there, I'm not going to be shocked. I'm not going to be puzzled. Or, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be going for it the whole time. And again, if there's anyone for a job to figure any puzzle out, I'm the man. I, I truly do believe that. And I get to show that on, on Sunday. I wonder, what, if anything, has Dan Hooker said to you about uh, Islam, just his strength and just what it was like being in there, if anything surprised him? I haven't really ha- had that conversation with him, to, to be honest. Uh, uh, I haven't. Uh, obviously... You know, he got, he got caught. You know, we got uh, what uh, Islam did a great job of of catching the the leg as he went on top and then got into a dominant position and 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 got there. You know, there's not much uh, you can uh, really uh, do about that. Obviously, 
again, we, we know uh, Islam's good. I uh, haven't really had that conversation, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah. But, uh, again, I've got a, a lot shorter arm, so I'm, I'm a lot harder to Kimura. <laughs> Even though your arms are longer than his, I wonder yeah, though... Yeah, that's actually, yeah. In, in the countdown... I'm sure I don't have long arms, yeah, my bad. In the countdown, you mentioned how you, your whole life you've been dealing with... Stocky with, arms, stocky arms. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm looking at. You, the whole life you've been dealing with monsters of men, and obviously the narrative here is like, you know, the size yeah. difference. And I just wonder, like, when was the first time in your life that you took out a significantly, you know, bigger dude? Maybe even before, like, your professional fight career, or just you, you realize you had that ability in you. Oh, man, <laughs> that's been happening forever. You know, it's been happening forever, even on the footy field, all that. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, he's moving up. Like, it's like crazy. It's like, I'm training, like, every day in the, in the gym uh, with guys uh, heavier than me. You know, this is lightweight. I train with, like, welterweights. I train with uh, even middleweights sometimes, you know what I mean? Especially in the grappling and wall work and all that type of stuff. Uh, wrestling, like, these are the guys I, I, I'm usually grappling and, and doing them stuff with because the guys my size – are obviously usually going to struggle with me there. So I usually got to go with the bigger guys. That's why people are keep mentioning the power uh, and size. It's not that. I look at it more, uh, the the thing that to deal with is is their style. You know what I mean? Like their, their grappling ability, they do certain things. Um, you know, that's that's more of something that I'm looking at. Like not power. No one's ever just overpowered me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so... Uh, Again, if he, if he thinks I'm just going to be some weak little uh, featherweight, then he's going to be in for a rude shock. There's a lot of talk about legacy with this fight. Uh, after it's all said and done, how does Alex Volkanovsky want to be remembered? Oh, man, it's... Obviously, uh, you know, I'm chasing. I'm, I'm in a good position right now, but I'm chasing to be, like, you know, one of the greatest, all the greatest, you know what I mean? Again, that's not going to be up to me to decide, but that's where, that's where I want to be. But one thing that I do... You know, I want to, I'll be proud of obviously them accomplishments, but I'm really proud that I've been able to be myself the whole way through. You know, some people need to sell themselves out and do things, uh, you know, be fake and all this type of stuff. I, I'm happy that I was me the whole way through the whole process, and uh, I'm in a position I am now. So very proud of that. Who's been fake? Who's been fake? Yeah, I'm sure he's know uh, plenty of people. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, mate. Uh, how are you feeling at uh, at the bigger weight? Are you feeling just as explosive and? Powerful? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that's something that uh, earlier on when I was uh, bulking and, you know, I was up to like 81 kilograms and all that type of stuff. Um, obviously, I was uh, very strong, but I mean, uh, you know, I wasn't really happy with that movement. So as soon as, but we needed to do that. That was a part of the process. We started bringing it down and each uh, each kilo, each pound that come down, I just got faster, sharper. And now I'm at the, you know, obviously the last couple of weeks have just been, well, last few weeks have just been absolutely perfect. I uh, really found uh, where we need to be. So my strength is uh, right where we want it. And my, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much that, that featherweight that you see with the movement. So uh, we found the perfect balance of it all. And uh, you'll see it Sunday. Are you sick of eating? I was. Yeah, I was. You know, now... Uh, you know what? It's, it's funny, man. You'd be you'd be surprised with the 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 like a bulking. You end up getting like a what do you, what would you call it? Like a food disorder. Like you end up starting to hate food, man. It's it's crazy. So fight week ain't that bad because I, I don't care about food right now. <laughs> if the UFC came to you and said we want you to coach the Ultimate Fighter, who would the guy you'd least like to be around for six weeks be? Least be around. I mean, I wouldn't mind the the fakeness, right? Again, you would. Uh, I can deal with things that are pretty good. I'm pretty chill. I laugh everything off. So. Um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I can deal with anything. So in in that situation, obviously I'm prepared to put up with some shit. So it won't matter who's in, who, who's doing it with me. But um, who would be? Obviously, your Conor McGregor's would be fun. You, you know, obviously Colby Covington uh, doesn't uh, you know make sense. But I mean, like guys like that would probably be fun. It's probably the only time uh, you would really want to really put up with them. Is probably on a on a show like that, have a bit of fun with it. So who don't? So who do? Yeah, yeah, that could be fun as well. Yeah. Alex, this is Sydney. Are you? Sorry, last question, guys. As you sit here today, um, going into such a huge fight, how do you reflect on your journey coming from Wollongong, working as a concreter, fairly humble kind of background, um, and and all the sacrifices that have led to this moment? Yeah, man, it's a again incredible journey, crazy journey, uh, but it's a journey that anyone in the world uh, can do. You know, with the right. Uh, Right mindset, belief, and all that type of stuff. That's something that is a message that I'm always trying to push. Is uh, you know a lot of these people that are coming in here were just you know we're all just regular guys. Yes, I'm going to be very athletic and all that type of stuff. But 
uh, being athletic uh, goes nowhere without the hard work and all that type of stuff. So um, there's plenty of guys that have reached the top. And I think myself, you know, again, I try and say I'm pretty normal. You know, I don't think I was ever athletically gifted. I've probably always been strong, but that's it. But look where I am right now. You know what I mean? With uh, the right uh, mindset, uh, mentality, uh, work ethic and all that type of stuff, the, the, the stuff that uh, really uh, gets you to the top. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that uh, the people need to... Need to see, and that's why I'm the man for this job because of all that stuff. You know that ticker, that heart, all that, all that stuff. You you talk about what you need. Um, that's why I really do believe in. That's why you see the confidence in myself because I know I'm going to do what needs to be done. I know I'm going to turn up on the night. I know I'm going to, you know, if I am in a bad spot, I'm going to deal with it. You know what I mean? I've got the heart to get myself out of any position and come up on top. You know what I mean? So that's a uh, that's something. So even doing this and. You know, the underdog story, that's why I love it as well, because I keep showing these people, these uh, these underdogs, these people out there that probably don't believe in themselves. They're not sure. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them what can be done. You know what I mean? Right now, people are counting me out. They won't su- Sunday. Sunday, uh, I'm going to shock the world, and I can't wait to do it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV, and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV, on Twitter, and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.